Now, this keyboard might look beautiful, but beneath the surface, it's hiding a dark secret. One year ago today, I filled this keyboard with Play-Doh. Now you're probably thinking, okay, that's dumb. You're dumb, dumb. But in this video, we'll talk about why I did it and whether or not it ruined my keyboard one year later. Why would you put Play-Doh in a keyboard? What am I doing with this tape? Who knows? We'll stick around and find out. Howdy, hey, Hippio Tech here, and let me take you back to the ghost of Christmas past. This story begins with a simple keyboard, an Epo Maker SK68. Now, last year in my quest to be as Christmassy as possible, I made a DIY candy cane board, which honestly I was pretty proud of. I spray painted it, masked off lines for the candy cane lines. You know, this was all around a good thing. Uh, if you ignore literally all of the scuffs. Now it's the end of the year, so we're reflecting on past things we've done, and I'd honestly like to do more DIY. If you'd like to see that too, get subscribed and leave a comment. But we're here to talk about Play-Doh and why the heck I thought it might have been a good idea to put it in my keyboard. Now, being as extra as I was, I did it in a candy cane pattern, red, white, red, white, etc. Now, if you're new to the world of keyboards, generally if there's a lot of empty space in your board, it'll make it sound hollow and not so satisfying. So my thought was, fill it with Play-Doh, herder, brilliant idea. Okay, to be fair, I did put a layer of plastic wrap in between the Play-Doh, so it hopefully wouldn't dry out. But some of you thought that it might explode, which was the dumbest thing I've ever read. If that does indeed happen, then uh, eh, at least we tried. So basically my methodology with this Play-Doh mod was put the Play-Doh in, put a layer of plastic wrap, and then smush the PCB in, hoping that the plastic wrap would keep it safe. I also got some concerns that the PCB might corrode, and I'll investigate that as well. That could be bad if it did. Play-Doh has a very high salt content, so at the very least, I'm expecting it to crystallize, but I'm not sure if corrosion will be a big issue. But no matter what happens, I told you guys not to do this, so if any of you did it and it exploded or something, that's not my fault. Also, to top off the keyboard, I had these Christmassy tie-out keycaps. They're pretty nice. I don't think you can get them anymore, though. So after building my keyboard and filling it with Play-Doh, it basically sat on a shelf for about three months and then sat under my bed for another eight until I moved and found it again. I kind of forgot I had it. I think originally I said I'd do a six month update, but this will be the 12 month update. So there you go. It's been almost exactly one year. For some reason, none of the scuffs happened to repair themselves. And I think I got bonus scuffs because I dropped it a couple times. Okay, but after one year, we need to compare the sound. So I'm gonna give you guys a quick little sound test of what it sounded like one year ago, and then a quick sound test of today. Something I noticed previously is that using Play-Doh as a dampener, at least when it's fresh, it makes the board sound overall pretty wet. And I wonder if that sticks around. Okay, so that was after a year, and I haven't tested to see if it works yet, just the sound. I'd say overall, it definitely sounds drier, but it doesn't sound hollow, which is a good thing. Uh, yeah, we're gonna have to talk about that. Okay, so the case is basically a maraca. However, my concern here was, did it stay in big pieces, or did it turn into a bunch of little pieces? If it turned into a bunch of little pieces, that's gonna be a bit of a nightmare. So we're gonna need to get this thing open fast. I had totally forgotten how to disassemble this thing. So I kind of just fiddled around with keycaps and my wow stick won't work, what's going on? Um, okay, candy cane? Oh, that worked, candy cane worked. Yummy. Mm. Okay, low key, I'm so addicted to those candy canes. I've eaten like 30, somebody please help me. They're like the soft ones that you can crunch right through. I'm not, I'm not an animal, I, I don't crunch through candy canes like that usually. Okay, well now it's time to solve the first part of this video. Did the Play-Doh stay? Oh, oh no. Oh no. Okay, so it dried up, which we definitely assumed was gonna happen, but I honestly didn't expect it to dry up this fast. I expected it to take a couple years. I thought the plastic wrap would offer a good enough seal that we wouldn't have that issue. This is a classic case of you versus the guy she tells you not to worry about, uh, but you can decide which one you are, I guess. So it's dried out, but is that really a problem? It was reducing the hollowness, like it didn't sound hollow, you heard it yourself. And it didn't crumble into little tiny pieces, like honestly it probably would have stuck together had I not shook it around a lot. But ultimately, oh, oh no. Now I don't know if you guys can see this, but the PCB has definitely corroded quite a bit. Now this makes me think that it won't work, but I'll test it out soon enough. Now I know what you're thinking, you're thinking Hippio, you should eat this, this looks yummy. 
No, I'm not going to eat it. Look, it's literally got salt crystals on it. Um, that sounds like dehydration. And I'm a member of the watering hole gang. So this is uh, no snacks. No snacks. Listen to that. That would break a tooth. Now, I had an idea that I would save this thing. So I'm going to need to clear all of this out. Oh, it's not all coming out, is it? Oh, no. Okay, well, I'll try a lot of brute force. Oh, this is not satisfying. I'm so sorry you have to see this. So it only took about a minute or so, and I managed to get all of the Play-Doh out. It did break into smaller shards, which was a bit of a bummer, but overall it stayed mostly clumped together. Perfect for scooping into the trash can. Oh, also this is my new studio. Look at the ground. The ground looks very nice. Maybe I'll do a studio tour. Let me guys know if you want to see that. Now, one bummer of the Play-Doh is it did leave a residue on the case that I couldn't get off very easily. Now, I could wash it with soap and water, but that would be kind of questionable. So, basically, I'm going to do what most governments do and cover this up and never think about it. Oh, it's snowing. Look, guys, it's snowing. Wow. It's a white Christmas after all. Oh, oh no, it was pillow foam from my $100 pillow. Wow, it made it with the move. Very nice. So I'm going to be going back to my Hippio roots for this build and filling it with pillow foam. With the Play-Doh removed, this keyboard is going to sound hollow, and we don't want that. So pillow foam it is. Now, this isn't the most dense foam, so it's not going to sound completely muted. This will still allow some of the sound to get through. I had an idea of pouring a Flex Seal candy cane pattern, but uh, I will do that in a later video. Now, just like any billionaire in the last couple years, we're going to just cover this up with tape. Blue tape though, not red tape. If you're new to my channel, then we do the Tempest mod or tape mod around here. Basically, you cover the back of your PCB in tape and it makes the board sound a little bit poppier, uh, deeper as well. I've got a video on it in the top right if you're curious, but I was figuring, you know what? I've got this thing open. Let's put some mods on it and make it sound better overall. That's the ultimate goal here, right? Now, next, we've got the keyboard. So it's full of foam and we've got the PCB covered in tape. It's worth noting that this is an optical PCB and the board isn't wireless, so we don't have any batteries or anything like that to worry about. If this had batteries, it'd probably be ruined. With the keycaps back on, we've got the board built and it's time to check to see if it works. Now, if I was a responsible YouTuber, this would be the part where I show, don't tell, you know? I'd show you that it's working and that it works. But uh, I didn't record it and I'm a little bit lazy and it's Christmas time, so there you go. Here's the thing though, it doesn't quite work. But not how you think. Basically, all of the LEDs have stopped working, but the keyboard still works perfectly fine as a keyboard. Just none of the LEDs work. I'm not 100% sure why this is, but it's definitely something to do with the corrosion on the PCB. Duh. So what did one year of Play-Doh do to my keyboard? Very, very naughty things. It, it broke it, basically. I feel like that's not the most uh, fulfilling answer, but you know, if you want to be fulfilled, then take a look at my EP that's releasing very soon. You can pre-save it down below. It's six songs that I made. They're not related to keyboards. They're like in the style of Joji and those types of guys. Uh, click the link down below. I think you'll really like it. Anyways, here's a sound test of before, middle, and after. <laughs> 